This bark with not square design and I've noticed some popularity on one of my videos so <clears throat> um, I haven't worked on that video for quite a while but um, have been using the method for quite some time of using AutoCAD and Chief Architect together and I actually use them in both directions and so I thought I'd just kind of uh, I've got some work I need to set up for a project I'm working on right now and I thought I'd just run through how I do that so that uh, you have a fresh better looking lesson on on how to work with that and so here as an example let me get my cursor going real quick first okay now with my cursor going hopefully you can see it better um, so one thing I do with with AutoCAD and those of you are, are AutoCAD users are probably real familiar with blocks and so in this drawing um, I've got a block and it's sitting right here so there's that block reference and it's basically just a, a pre-cut stud setup and I've got some text in there that tells me exactly what's going on and then behind it you can see the image of the um, the chief um, drawing that was exported from chief and then xref into here so if I go to my xrefs I can see this is it and I can say okay unload it and get that text out of the way so now you can read this text easier so it's a nine foot pre-cut which is 104 and 5 8 inch stud and with the plates it comes to 109 and 1 8 inch so I use this all the time to throw in pre-cuts for construction <clears throat> and then down here I've got a quarter inch pad and three quarter inch of engineered hardwood these are my floor trusses. <clears throat> you can see there are some ghost image here because I actually have two drawings that are um, XREFed into this plan. Oops, I have two things chosen right now. Let me go back to that again. <clears throat> Come over here, identify which one it was, unload that. Now you can see just the AutoCAD. And obviously, some work to do. Um, what I really wanted to work on today which I use these I get these far enough along where I know all my elevations are working out between AutoCAD and Chief Architect because it's a lot of difficulty to get Chief Architect to draw all these heights correctly at least for me and um, so to ensure that I've got it right I bring it in to here and one nice thing <clears throat> about doing this is I'm gonna to go to my chief drawing so here's my my framing view right here right now um, and this is the 3d framing overview <clears throat> and so <clears throat> excuse me the um, this plan I've been working on for quite some time um, I think yeah the hardware the framing hardware is turned on so um, this has special insulation on it you can see this wall down here attic wall is showing that insulation which is two inch and a half layers and it's under a bat you can't see the green board is the bat and so I just turned them green to make them clear when I'm looking at layers <clears throat> they stop short of the other framing because there is a stone veneer on the on the ground level <laughs> And I've got work to do to them because you want them to drain properly. So having <clears throat> this piece across the bottom is something I have to work out and make sure everything's working fine. And I've been editing the trusses, so you'll see I've got some spacing things that are incorrect and that sort of thing. So, But let's get into more of the guts of how to bring these back and forth. And one thing that is pretty nifty about the way that this works if I switch over to my other screen <clears throat> and if I go to my working I've got two one is working set and that's gonna actually change the wrong because it didn't switch over <clears throat> so let's undo that layer change real quick because it did it on the screen changed my framing plan into a okay now one problem is is that when I hit that I'm no longer in this program 
if I'm switching screens on my other computer. Now that I'm over here, got this highlighted. I turned them pink to make them really obvious. Uh, and I've got it selected. The gray to white just wasn't bright enough, and other colors aren't quite as vibrant as the pink deal works. Pretty good. So, easy to notice. Um, but I want to change this layer set, so I'll switch to the other screen, just kind of so you can see. I'm going to change my, my layer set, and I have a couple, and that's for the purposes of doing this. So I have a working layer set, which is our normal set, and then I have a working layer set with CAD. And so I'll show the differences in that. So let's first just change this to the working layer set on that right-hand side, <clears throat> and it changed it over. And the electrical's on and all that sort of stuff. And I I don't need that for what I would like to do right now, which is bring in the floor plan into my structure drawings and then um, be able to, now that I got my stairs straightened out, I need the framing to go under this portion of the stair around this, this post to be in there and get things straightened out. So I'm gonna hit the F9 and Chief to get the reference to turn off. My floor reference didn't go. Let's go, there we go. Now I'm gonna turn on my layers and I'll bring that window over. I've got it floating on my other screen. <clears throat> so I'll bring it over because what I need to do is I don't want any of this electrical in what I'm doing here because it has nothing to do with structure. So I'm going to turn that off, turn that off. Um, <clears throat> really don't care about any room labels. They might be good for, for um, what you guys, to, to help you see where I'm at, but um, they just aren't of any benefit. They <clears throat> get in the way sometimes, especially when I'm working on frame plan. Then, uh, I've already got the sections in, although I need to update them, but I'm not going to worry about them right now. So I'm going to turn off my cameras, because they're also one of those things that's just in the way, and they will import. And I've got mechanical in here. <clears throat> so let's get rid of cameras and mechanical. So mechanical, turn that off. Um, this is plumbing. Um, if I was doing the foundation, then that would be okay to have on. So I'll leave it there. I'm going to do the framing first, but we'll leave it there regardless. And then we'll go up to cameras, and let's make sure that our cameras are off. And the, the layers are kind of looking the way that I want <clears throat> to bring it in. And then I've got these CAD lines. Um, these are kind of important because they're helping me, at least the green ones, are helping me determine where the wall is in different locations. So I'm going to go up and you can see here I've got the orange line on both of these and I need that probably to be down on the other layer. So I'm going to hit copy on the other screen and then I'm going to say let's go down and then I'm going to do the edit hold position which is in the top pull down menus. I know you can't see. Edit, paste, and then paste, hold, position, or control, alt, D. Now that has pasted these orange lines in. The green lines had to do with how I made sure my landing, stairs, all that stuff was squared off and perfect. And I had to trick this thing a little bit to get the stair to work with the way I have it configured by changing the stair itself into a room downstairs and... Um, then saying open to below because it, when I would use the automatic stairwell tool it just would not take with my the way I've got this drawn excuse me coffee addiction so um <clears throat> let's take this out of the way <clears throat> I'm gonna take it way out of the way because I need to switch screens on that other recorder for you guys so now that this is here I'm gonna go ahead and go up up a level because what I'm interested in is where's this railing and stair for here I'll we'll work on that first and get it into my framing plan um, the orange ones 
and let's just double check that. So the orange should be on my CAD2 layer. And so on that screen where I went over here, I've also duplicated some stuff here. So CAD default is your regular CAD default. And then I do like this one to be green, the CAD2. <clears throat> um, and so what I'm going to do is I want all the red stuff to go away. Don't need it. So that should be right there and leave me with this definitions of where my stair and rail are located so I can get the framing in there just right. And looks like I still have a perspective camera on. So um, let's just go check out perspective cameras are still on. <clears throat> okay. So now that's gone. So now I can export this which I'll do on the other screen. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to switch over to the other screen so you can see the commands. And um, maybe it's best even to, let's take this guy and put it on this side. Give my computer a second to catch up here. <clears throat> Shifting entire view sometimes bogs it down for a second. And I'll bring this over here. Now we can watch both at once. So. Here, I'm going to go, and you don't have to have it zoomed correctly. I can have it in like this. It'll still grab the whole thing. Um, this, exterior furniture. So I'm going to turn that layer off just real quick on the other screen. I just don't need extra stuff in this picture. So that's actually under furniture exterior <coughs> and not the other. Well didn't do it so I'm gonna hit my open um, and so here it is my layer fixtures exterior oh I went furniture exterior so fixtures exterior turn that off <coughs> now you can see one went away this one's still there because it's highlighted I also don't need this dimension string really at all so I'm just gonna delete it these are kind of nice to have that's my actual stair width is 50 inches <clears throat> and so i will leave that there for now and then this one inch is from the stair if you look at how a stair is defined that's on that green line so it's 50 inches from there to here so my landings and everything i wanted to make sure they were all correct so from the stair out to the edge of wall and that'd be drywall or in this case, the invisible wall to define this room is one inch. But I'll leave that dimension as well. Just now that I'm back here, I don't really care that I have this stuff on or off. <clears throat> um, this should all be on the plumbing layer. They could be turned off very quickly. In fact, they kind of do get in the way. And this here, open, and I can see that it's layer is appliances, which is layer I created. Um, so my fridge is on appliances, the stove is on appliances. So I'll even turn that off. Um, let's go ahead and, and turn off plumbing. And there may be, and if you look at mine, I really like to keep things separate. So I have got two different types of plumbing, which is my plumbing rough, which is any pipes or lines or anything like that. And so you can see down here when that gas stove turned off, this plumbing rough is still there. So they are very separate for me. Um, <clears throat> so I'll turn off the plumbing, but I leave on the plumbing rough because in some places where I've got a floor drain, I want to know where it is to make sure that I'm not going to hit. And look at that, my plumbing turned off the toilet. So. I need to know where that is to make sure that the drain doesn't hit a flooring member. And so I will leave plumbing on in this case because I am looking at getting information off this to put into structure. So let's drag this out of the way again. And now I'm ready to go. So I'm going to do file, export. I'm going to export to DWG. And everything here is pretty much default. I don't turn any of this stuff on. I don't want it. I don't care about it. 
Um, sometimes I'll do an export with wall layers and one without. It depends on what I'm working on. Um, <clears throat> here I'll leave the wall layers on. It won't bring over the hatch. So I don't have to worry about that. I've even tried to get it by saying export pattern lines, export filled areas. It just doesn't do it. So, um, little hokey on their part as far as chief, but it's not, it's not exactly the perfect system, but it works pretty good. Um, so here, if, if what's really nice about this is let's say I wasn't doing one for frame and I needed a new floor plan. I can look through here and I could say, okay, I've got, these ones are chief architects. So if I needed my section redone, you can see here I've got section elevations, which is where you have the elevation and you can see beyond. But if it's a paper thin slice, it's just the section. So I've got those all through here. In fact, this one I can delete. And that is because I don't use it. And this one even called black and white. I just don't need it. Um, and that has a lot to do with the fact that I did go through this sec elev exercise and trying to get it to do section elevations versus just sections. <clears throat> and so here's my section elevations, which is the elevation in the, the E in your um, section bubble. And then in the S in the section bubble, these are the sections. So those are the only drawings that I need out of Chief. Now I've got my CA, and in this case, um, I just need to change the name. And so this will be um, level <clears throat> one floor plan. And I just abbreviate those, keep the name short. Uh, maybe for the purposes of doing a instruction, I'll, I'll go ahead and spell them out. If you back up your stuff to external drives and any of your equipment <clears throat> goes through a hub where it's a little bit older, it can transfer without properties if names get too long. And that has to do with how many directories deep it is, all that kind of stuff. So, and I'm using Office 365, so this is deeper than it looks. Um, so I've got that, I got my name correct, and it has this CA for the chief, so I can tell the difference between just AutoCAD referencing its own drawings and stuff coming from chief. Although I bet these are all chief, and because it's in the export from chief file, and I just had gotten this, this project's two years in the making, so as I go along, I refine how I do stuff to identify it, because I might notice that if I don't put the CA <clears throat> for chief, then when I'm looking in AutoCAD at my XREF file, I can't tell the difference between my AutoCAD ones and my chief architect ones, unless that CA is there, so I can use that quick means of just unloading and be careful not to export just unload so you can bring it right back even if you're updating it and I'll show you why so I'm gonna hit save <clears throat> and now it's there so if I go to my AutoCAD where I want this one is I want to update framing and that was the first floor plan and what I'm looking to do is do the floor of that plan by knowing where the stairs were <clears throat> And so I'm going to open up one of my AutoCAD drawings here. And I want to go into my CD file. And um, I want the structure for level one to open up, I believe. And we'll see. We'll know as soon as I open it. And so <clears throat> when I look at this, here it is. And I can see. And I use symbols. So um, that's not a good example. I need one that's by itself, not in an array. Um, that one looks by itself. Yeah. So on this, this outer last one, it's continuous. It doesn't break on this wall for bearing because it's on a wall the whole way. <clears throat> so you can see that it's not just a line type. 
it's just a line dot line, which is from my old hand drafting days. And all you have to do with that is um, when you're selecting it, you selected that line dot line back out far enough to where you can see what's going on, come to your properties and just change this line type scale. So if I go back to one, like most people would use, it just becomes a line. It's not even a symbol. So if I increase that sum, which is probably the most common practice that I see, let's go up to like a 24. Now I've got a line dot line and great, there's a symbol, but in the case up here, I want them to do the floor twist and stop it on this wall and then continue again. <clears throat> not so important with floor trusses because the trust manufacturer will do the calculations on that stuff since they're responsible for it. But when it comes to beams, um, I'm doing those calculations and I need to know beams, headers, that sort of thing. I need to know where it starts and stops. So uh, because complex loaded beams tend to be larger than simplex loaded beams. So if I were to put a beam all the way across as one piece, since this is wider on this side, it will have more flexion under the same loading factor as this side, creating an uplift situation over here and creating a complex loaded beam. And if the situation is just right, the size will bump up. And so I always specify where things start and stop. <clears throat> and I believe we had that at 180. And so just turn back, you can see it turned right back into a symbol and you'll get used to them. If you find it to be kind of a pain at first, it comes pretty quick as to um, getting it laid out. So now I want to make sure that my layers are in good shape and I have used a lot of layer filters. So, um, yeah, I don't have a, here we go, CA level one is there. <clears throat> I don't see anything coming into view. So I'm going to look over here in my XRFs, and sure enough, I don't have anything but AutoCAD drawings loaded in here right now. So now that I'm on this CA level one, and the reason that it's named like this is so that I can use filters. So if I go into my layer system and I go down here, all I'm looking at are these layers. If I want to look at stuff to draw elevations, I can go up to my design or drawing. This drawing, these are layers to just use for drawing. If I'm doing design work, here's layers for that. If I'm working on framing, here's those layers, foundation, those layers. And I can switch them all or I can just go to all non-X ref layers. Because if you do all layers, all the X refs that are in here make this list forever long. And you don't want that. So, <clears throat> chief, take note. <laughs> Let's get layer filters in here. That'd be cool. Um, so I'll go back to my X refs. Make sure everything's good. And this is the current layer. That's where I do want it. So <clears throat> now let's bring it in. Um, so I'm going to go to my XREF flyout or type XREF, XREF. I will bring it over so you can see it. And let's go to my export. This is export from Chief. I just, oh, that was Belshi. Sorry, switch projects there. <clears throat> Hit the one below instead of up. If you don't know how to get these shortcuts in, just go to your location where you want to and hit this um, add current folder to places. It's not highlighted right now because it is my current place. So um, it'll add them on this side and then you can organize them. You can make them come and go that quickly. So like this project, I'm done. Um, so I can do that and it's a list that much shorter. So <clears throat> these are my all my projects. These are blocks that I get to quickly, to and from, details I need quickly, to and from, and then this is the CDs for this project, and this is the export chief file, which is what I need right now, and I need the CA, level one, floor plan, it's spelled out so we know, even I could look at it January 13th, and I'm going to hit open, 
and I'm going to insertion point on my own, but I want overlay and relative path. Those two settings are pretty important, um, especially, and it keeps you from having what's called an infinite loop situations. To do that, relative path <coughs> will also allow people to just place drawings if you're sending it to someone in your teammate and you're not on some sort of um, server system then they can just put it in the same folder all the drawings in the same place and it'll, they'll work all the extras will automatically work so hit ok and we'll see it pop in over here and it's not going to look very good and I'll show you why let's get this to go away now I've got it here, and so if you look at it, it's kind of nasty. Um, <clears throat> and what's happening is if I go to my layer system, first off, they're unreconciled. So I'm going to come in here, control A, select all, and then I'm going to come up here and reconcile the layers. <clears throat> That's done. Now, I want to go into here. It's different filter than this. So this is X dash ref, so the filter is set up to pick up that dash. If it doesn't have a dash in it, then it's going to be in this layer, which here's the drawing I just attached. If I come here, there's all of its layers. And you can notice that in this layer set, all of these guys have got these odd colors to them. So real quick, I'm going to go into <coughs> the drawing itself. So instead of syncing it, I'm going to open it. So here it is. <clears throat> and you get the warning. <clears throat> Created another program. Just hit OK. If you do a save, save as, it'll go away. Um, this line, you know, what exactly is going on there? Oh, that's my property boundary. Let's just get rid of that. Let's make sure none of that stuff's out, hanging out here. Okay, so... This is my layer set, but if I select it all, what I want it to do is as I'm working on it, I want them to start showing up. So I'm going to change all the lines to by layer. Now, as I go through <clears throat> and I change these zeros and anything that's dark, you know, these are okay, but these dark things. And it's pretty easy. I leave the blues. And I'll show you why. They're usually dimensions. They see the dimensions there. So, <clears throat> door labels, I don't care if I can see them or not. So, in fact, I'm surprised I actually brought them in. Um, I'll fix that in a second. That off, that one's off. Um, but let's just get these ones that are dark to lighten up. Probably those 75s. Yeah, those 75s are pretty dark, too that and that. I'm going to change the dimension to be a green. <clears throat> so the blue ones that are also dark, I will change those to be. Oh, look at this. Door. Oh, these are labels. Labels in text, I don't care about. I don't need to read it. I didn't even necessarily mean to import it. So, now that these are chosen, I can go to this color. And in my case, I like to go to my index color, select 9, hit OK, <clears throat> pick your own colors to whatever you'd like. 9 works very good to just get it done. Um, turn that guy on, I'll turn that guy on, just so I can see what's going on in my drawing. Now let's pick these, uh, oops, let's get these dimension layers selected. That uh, looks like it. No. Oh, that's labels. Yep, I don't want to mess with those. So these dimensions, we'll just change them. So I'll just click on this again <clears throat> and make them green. Now, here, just grab a layer, control A, grab it all. Because here, you don't, well, it depends on your style. I don't want any thickness. I want them all to be 0.18. Be nice and thin so I can see what's going on and they're not. Um, overpowering the drawing that I'm working on and it is just behind the scenes extra. So now it's thin. I don't care for the UCS icon. 
in my drawings um, <clears throat> because uh, it's 2D. I don't need it. Um, I could have not brought in this layer. That's the the roof um, bearing lines, and I think they get separated. Yeah, you can see it's separated into its pieces, so they're a little tedious to get rid of if you wanted to. They're they're nice and bright. They can be ignored easily. Um, let's get rid of these ones right here. All right, <clears throat> and you know this came in. Um, that came in, and so I'm just getting rid of those nice and quick. Um, I don't need to know which direction it is, and it's actually showing up and a down, so that's confusing to what I'm dealing with. <clears throat> All this shelving that's in here. Now, I just went, this is where Chief could really use to learn something. There's the cross. Instead of going over to the control panel and choosing crossing versus window I just choose the direction so you know this is a window so it has to be included this is just a cross so if I hit escape it's only gonna be things that I cross and I can delete all that that fast come on chief pick that one up please lots of people have asked for that <clears throat> And so these are all just shelving. Um, do I need to get rid of them? Probably don't need to. Uh, just clean it up a little bit. So let's call that clean enough. I'm just kind of showing you how you can deal with this sort of stuff. You can change any of these colors to whatever you want. Now that I'm happy with what I've got here, if I wanted to get rid of door swings, they're all individual lines now. So you can get rid of those as you see fit. Um, since I've got windows you know, the ability to just quickly window select, I could get rid of all these extra little blocks in here fairly quickly in AutoCAD, where I gotta switch back and forth between the two forms of selecting in Chief. And that is something that they really would be such an improvement for them to just pick that idea up and run with it, because it's, it's just a great feature to quickly do that or get rid of the whole thing by just crossing and of course I missed those guys up there because I hit them in the cross but um, just demonstrating how quickly I can get from one type of selection to the other anyway that doesn't matter to what we're what I'm doing for this so let's get on with saving this and now that I've saved it should actually recognize itself next time I open as a true AutoCAD drawing. And I can do the Z, E, zoom extents and see what's out here. Looks like I got some artifacts. So stuff from the site possibly. And I don't want to bring that in. So now I'm going to zoom extents again and I'm in. So <clears throat> cleaned up, hit save. Do have two water heaters because I'm waiting for a decision on what type they want. Um, so one of these is a heat pump, the other one is uh, propane or electric. Alright, <clears throat> there's a bench seat here, I guess we can, we need to frame that eventually, modestly. So this is ready, and I could bring this into Chief, or sorry, I could bring this into my framing plan now. So here it is, and it says, hey, it's already in here, but do you want to reload it because you made some changes? Reload. Now it's updated. And you'll notice that those changes in color didn't transfer over. So I'm going to grab this guy. Come down here, and I'm going to see if I can make this quick by going here and turn that guy on. Now I'm going to go control A, and I certainly want my line weights to all be 0.18, maybe even smaller, but certainly 0.18. <clears throat> and then I have to go through and select all those, or can I do, there is no by layer while you're in this portion. So I need to change those colors in here, and this will change all of them. I don't want to do that. So, um... 
what I want to do real quick is I'm trying to test and see if I have to do this or can I select this go to home I definitely want it to be in the background so when I bring it over to where it belongs in this drawing I want it behind everything I also have got this go back to home again by layer by layer by layer everything's good there I will lock it once I've moved it so it fades it because I have a fade set up so when layers are locked they're faded uh, that says 50 I usually do them 67% um, it's a quirk of my own so looks like this didn't translate to changing in the color so whether you have to change it in the actual drawing or not um, we can try that and see what happens but you do have to change it in here so I'm gonna grab Oops, grab the layers and grab them over on the name side. Sorry, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Oh, that one, that one. And there, 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 and there, and there. Scroll down, there. And now, go to my layer go to index change it to nine <clears throat> that's eight nine okay all those are nice and bright now um these i don't care about in fact we should have got rid of them they shouldn't even be there um they probably are not so i don't think that that's an error looks like i missed one so i'll come back quickly change that also to nine and then my dimension those to green green okay and look at all that looks looks brilliant so now I need my connection point so there's a, uh, a post there so I need to find an outside wall that is going to be the correct layer so I usually use my stud so if you look here the distance from here to there is five and a half inches and you can double check yourself make sure you're in the right Oh, that's fun. I was going too far. Five and a half. So, now I'm going to move this guy from there. And it gets a little jumpy over to here. Get myself close. Let it settle down. Depending on the speed of your computer. <clears throat> Once it settles down. Oh, I've got foundation here. I don't think that this is... Did I go to the inside? I did. I got lucky. So should be right here I'm not sure if that's right I'll have to check around no I can tell so I'm just gonna move it again oops move that yeah it's kind of complex though so let's go over to framing area where I've just got framing and we'll move this from here to there that should have fixed it. Now we're looking good. Okay. So you can see I've got this hatch that's in there. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, make sure I've got this highlighted. And I can tell right now. So you can see it's off. And so that's telling me, hey, look, your AutoCAD drawing is off. The difficult parts to draw are out here. So if anything... I want to make sure my alignment is very good on these angled walls and then I'll fix the other ones quickly so let's move this from there to here and let's see how our alignment is starting to work out with posts and such and I haven't touched up this drawing in a long time and so I think that the fact that it's off is correct. Um, and so this is what's going to tell me, hey, here's where you need to go through and fix stuff. And so let's see what I've got extra left in here. <coughs> um, I want my level one floor plan from AutoCAD to reload. 
And let's see how that's looking. Because with that loaded, that should be up to date. So I've reloaded that and I'm looking at where it landed. So it's here and it's not, it's not even working well with what's going on here. So I've either got a lot of work to do on my framing drawing to get it into shape or I don't have alignment of this drawing either yet. So for the moment to get my chief drawing uh, kind of out of the way I'm just gonna lock it and so I'm gonna go here the CA drawing here and um, instead of unlock I'm sorry unload it so that it's not even visible but I haven't moved it I haven't got rid of it it's still hanging out there and once I've got it linked to this drawing and located correctly then anytime I update it from chief it'll update it here so, with a little bit of work, it's, it's not quite like having just an XREF within AutoCAD. It's not that easy, but it sure takes a lot of work out of it. So I need to figure out why I've got... Um, so this, this, this line out here is stone. Um, so I just need to check everything and see that alignments are looking good, which, man, they sure are. There's some few exceptions. I know that I've relocated these posts as the arch work came into play. And so these two are off. Now, nice thing about AutoCAD is just hit the stretch command and it's done. So I'll do the same thing with these. I'll get them all straightened out. <clears throat> but um, yeah, let's straighten this one out too because that may give me all the information I need to make sure that I have got the chief drawing coming in correctly. So it looks like this one is right on. Some of these out front moved incrementally, so I just want to get in close and make sure they're right on, because I'm going to use this to reference how I lay this in. And then this is designed different in Chief than it is on here, and I have to figure out which way we're going to go. Um, just the steps. So, um, this layer is, that's footing. Okay. So this is a crawl space on this side. This is the garage slab with footing. And then there's a basement below in this whole area here. And then a back patio, which is off location. And I will correct that according to the chief because the chief is correct in that instance. So here, let's come into this guy and let's unload him let's reload our chief and so if we can't get this guy now it's bright because it's not locked but i do want to get it aligned better and it just seems way off and it's me recognizing what layer is what so this layer is my stud layer or what and out here so if I go D from there, I find out where it is. There's five and a half. So this line right there is what I call the baseline because it's bearing all the way through the home. Now out here, I'm in a crawl space. So this is the eight inch. So the interior line is not going to line up, but the exterior line should. So I'm going to move this from here. I'm done to see where it lands. I'm going to put it right on there. Zoom in. Yeah, I didn't grab it perfectly. Um, in fact, I can't even tell you what Chief's got going on there. It's kind of bizarre. Let's take a zoom in on that corner and see what's happening there and why when it exported, it gave me 
that strangeness. I believe it's this corner. So these lines here, um, those red ones, that's my baseline. So if I end up wanting to do this again, there is also, and I think this, I've got this set up. Um, let me export to ACAD. Export with wall layers. So if I go export to ACAD, it should automatically get me to where I like it to be because I have a layer set set up. So I could have exported this really quickly. Um, and I would have had this guy, would have had my framing layers. And then I did want those reference lines. <clears throat> so I just need to go up to um, the CAD 2 default, turn it on. And then those showed up right here and there. And if I wanted wall layers to show up, come down, let me show you what I'm doing. Come down to here and not main layers only, but wall layers. I want those to come in. Again, it's not going to export the fill. Then I have to go through export and bring it all in. Um, change the colors again. But I'm not going to worry about that. What I'm worried about is what is happening there. So maybe that's not the best corner to check. Let's try this guy. Oh, my X ref. Yeah, see, it's off. So let's just make sure it's right on from there to there. Now I've got it. So, yep, looks like it's lining up. I don't know what this garbage is, um, but garbage in, garbage out. I can come into here. I can take a look at what I exported, and I don't need this stuff. So it was irrelevant anyway. So <clears throat> I can just hit save. This is cool. Okay, so now that this is in here, I'm going to hit save. Now I'm going to go back to my framing. See this? It says right here, reload. Boom, fixed. So that's gone. And my lines that I want for um, use with these CAD lines to get my walls lined up and make sure I've got the proper framing to support these stairs. They're there now. And I know which ones are which because there's the dimension to that one. And and if I take that, oh, that's the actual dimension. Oh, that's the extra. I'd have to change it in here. And so if I want this guy to be that orange, and this to be that orange, this is the CAD default to. It is set up to be by layer as I asked it to be. But in this case, now, the, out, the outer one, I do want that to be orange, so I'm going to hit save. And that just helps me determine which one's which quickly. And so I'll come back to here. Again, it says to reload, and we got orange. So now I've got the orange and the green. So that is setting up this guy here. Now, I also have a working drawing. And in my working drawing is where I create elevation sections, all that sort of stuff. So I check my sections. They've been working out good enough. Now the homeowners need information about the stone. So I need to get elevations done. And I can do the old method of projecting lines, which I still do to verify that things are working out. But I only use it as checking. Once I know that I've got confidence in my chief model and that it's building pretty darn close, um, getting chief exact, it's a challenge. Um, let me just kind of switch screen here and I'll show you kind of what I mean. So <clears throat> if I get up into complex areas, you can see this guy's got a hole in it. Well, that's due to a 
ghost piece that will show up and then sometimes it'll go away. Up here, this wall extension you see doesn't exist. And um, yeah, it's just weird. Why it's doing that, I have tried it. all sorts of things to get that to correct and I can't. So it's pretty darn close. And over here, um, there's a little weirdness in the in the roof, but it's not gonna affect um, the way that this thing is built. Um, it just doesn't make my model look pristine. So this is just issues with trying to do really complex stuff. Um, I am gonna come back in once I get a decision from the clients on what style of overhang they would like if they want something that's curved here to pick up the overhang for the roof or if they want something squared off if it's something in between then I'll get all this filled in and then I need to go back to um, the Fibonacci or magic rectangle uh, and get my column heights beautifully done they're a little out of proportion for my my liking but that's gonna be at the very end of this project making sure that i've got time because it's something they they probably will have a lot of stuff to deal with in the field by what size fiberglass casing can they purchase so um the columns themselves um, i've eliminated these arches out of the um, materials list because they are actually just a solid. I tried to make individual pieces, and can you get close? Yes, but it is a tremendous amount of work. If there's any editing, you have to redo it all. So um, that won't be in the materials list. The accuracy of this is all about that materials list. So what I want to do, let's switch screen here. I'm on this guy, but I want to go to my plan and then I want to switch my layer to my working layer set because I want to see my cameras. Oh, I went in and I manually turned those off. Instead of going to my preset uh, export file <laughs> and change that. So let me go and turn my cameras back on. And all I'm really interested in is I want the elevation cameras. So I have got uh, wall elevation, but cross section elevation, that one. That should turn on, and we'll just do one for right now. Let's do the front. <clears throat> so I'm going to double click on this camera, and we're going to show the other direction. Sorry, I'm not showing the other direction. I'm not bringing that into chief, but this is how I'm going to get a quick idea into um, sorry into our AutoCAD I'm just gonna trace this really fast and then be able to get the stone numbers for them so let's pick this guy let's open it up find out what layer he's on and it's on electric so let's make sure the electrical's off Section view layer set. Do I have an export? Section export to AutoCAD. Looks like the electrical did not. Oh, yeah, it did turn on. Okay, just took it a second. How's everything else look? Looks good. So, layer sets are great. Great thing. And all I did was I changed that layer set from the standard section view layer set to my export to ACAD layer set. I also have one that's a plus CAD, which is AutoCAD overlaid on top of a section. And those are in my actual section sections. And let me show you one of those real quick. So if I come back to my floor plan and I were to do section four, create that, it's going to change my layer set. And you can see it did 
the it's set to section export to ACAD. Now that's because that's the last place I had it. So I can go to my straight up section layer set, which is just gonna probably turn on a couple more layers. You know, like the fireplace came on, these lights came on, some stuff that I don't really want to see in AutoCAD. I don't need lights, you know, all this stuff is kind of garbage. So for you know what I'm looking at there. So but I also have one which is the other direction. So it's the section view layer set plus CAD, which means there's an AutoCAD drawing overlaid in the other direction on top. And let me just check in here because I didn't see it come in. So I want to see AutoCAD block, structure plans, all those layers are on. So I'm guessing that I either deleted it for some reason I must have so let's just do it so what I would have done let's get a new one in here show you the other direction so I'm gonna come into a section view <clears throat> um, let me check again real quick we are in section A let's work with that one Go here and need to probably update these anyway. So this is not a bad exercise. So what I've got in here in these AAs, you can see it's section AA labeled. Um, and I'm gonna come into here and I'm gonna look for my CA. There's AA, there's AA, and I'm gonna unload those. So I'm just left with this guy here. Now I'm going to open up this drawing that I just keep around, and I keep one like in a project. So you can't see it. Well, there is one in here, I think, too. Uh, nope, I'm wrong. So if I go back to my main plan set, there's one here called Purge for CA Template. Um, and so what this is, is it's just a place where I've got the layers all kind of gone. There's nothing in here. If I look at my layer set, there's nothing in here. This is an empty blank template. And so I want to go back to my working drawing. Uh, I've got to hit model space again. And then I'm going to grab this guy because that's all I want. Control Shift C. I'm going to hit 0, comma, 0, Enter. Now I've grabbed it in the manner with Control Shift C be able to paste it into another drawing. Control V, zero, comma, zero, enter. Now it's in here. Just got to zoom extends. There it is. And so there's some extraneous stuff. Um, you know, I could go through, look at more cleanup, whatever I want to do. But for right now, let's just do a save as. I want to be cautious. Make sure and I hit save as and don't save over my template. That's clean. And so here, um, I'm just going to go back to this folder because it's easier to navigate around so I can back up one. And then I've got a folder in here, ACAD purged for chief. And so I'm going to go in here and I have section AA open right here in front of me. And it's section AA purged. You can see an older version. So I'm going to hit save. Do I want it. Yep, got more information here. Updated. So now this is ready to go. If I wanted to, I could say, hey, you know what? These I don't need in my model. Um, if I want to identify what all these layers are, I could leave these notes here. I could take them out. It depends on, you know, how much you know about your own drawing. And so I can delete that. Um, floor truss is a 24. I don't that note wouldn't even be in the right spot. I mean, I'd want it to be, or it could be real better, but let's just delete it. Um, and you can go through cleanup, whatever you'd like. And like this is an old line. It's not the style of railing we're using anymore. So it uh, looks like I've got to get the roof on over here. It's kind of nice. You can see what you're missing in AutoCAD too. Um, 
But for the purpose of this video, we're in good enough shape. So let's hit save. Now, here's the cool thing about this direction. If I come back here, and now I am on the section view plus CAD. I'm going to go File, Import, DWG, Next. Let's bring it over, you can see it. I'm going to browse to that file. That file was section A purged. Ooh, let's cancel out real quick. Sorry, we'll leave it right. Yeah, actually, I'm going to cancel all the way. I just want to come back here. That word purged is important. So let's zoom extents, make sure it's there's nothing laying out there, and then PU for purge. <clears throat> and you can see there is some stuff. So I'll just hit purge, purge, purge items, close. And then I just hit save. Now it is saved as the section A purged. Now let's go into chief, file, import, DWG, next, browse, grab that guy, open it. This stuff, those natural settings are how I like it. I don't like converting them to polylines. Individual lines are fine. Um, it's going to be on a layer. You'll see that when I get to that point. So here, you don't ever need to bring in your depth points. Depends on how you drew your blocks as to whether or not you want zeros. Sometimes I just leave it there to be safe. Sometimes I accidentally insert onto my general junk layer. And so I'll leave that on if I don't have a bunch of junk line drawn, which are lines that layer is for my own drafting purposes. It's kind of like construction line, but not construction lines. It's not the bubbles um, with the actual tags. So it's like CAD default in Chief. Let's go with that. So now I'm going to hit next. Now you can see it automatically wants to put it here, but that's not where I want it. I want it to be in my structure plans. Or if I had, like I could create one called elevation or sections. Here, I'm going to put it on my structure plans. And I don't worry about any of this other stuff. It's perfect. Now, I can create a unique name. But in this case, I've already imported this one. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that block. Keep file size down. And I can let it move to the origin. This never makes any difference. It doesn't hit right, no matter what I do. So, and I'm sure that there's some complicated way to get it to set up. Now, right now, it's all chosen. So this is your opportunity to get it in place perfectly. And what I have done is I verified that my pre-cut studs are correct. So I like to use those. So I'm going to do a point to point move from that base of that pre-cut right there. And I'm going to put it right at the base of this one right there. And boom, I have now got AutoCAD in chief to look at things like, gee, is my roof working right? It looks like there are some issues with alignment. I knew the stairs, I've been working on stairs. So that I knew. What I'm concerned with a little bit is what's going on up here. Why do I have such a discrepancy in roof? Why do I even have any discrepancy down here in my, um, the difference between what I'm seeing here. So let's, Let's just take a look at what you can do now very easily is if I'm trying to evaluate what's going on here, I put it on this layer. So I can turn it off the whole thing really quick, turn it back on, kind of get a view as what is where and how it needs to shift and what's happening. So what I'm concerned with a little bit is, is it back here? Did I not? 
drop it in the right place and I dropped I didn't I dropped it on the fireplace so I don't need to re-import the whole thing what I can do is I also have either all off or AutoCAD structure plans and what that does is it turns off my chief layers and it's thinking about it there we go uh, looks like I still got some trusses and stuff. There we go. Now we're off. So now this is just my imported AutoCAD drawing. So I can select it again. And let's just get it completely off of here. So I can reselect it once I turn my other layers back on. Which is going to be... Um, I'm in a section view. Oops, let's not do it there. I need to go here and change it to section view plus CAD. Now, my stuff should come back in. And it's thinking, I have three views open, so I'm giving it a little hard time. Not too bad though. So now this is still selected. I'm gonna grab it again. This time I just got to make sure I put it on the wall to the house, not the fireplace. So I'm just going to do a point to point. Point here. And let's come out to our model. Bring it to where you can see it well. And I must have gone to that one there. That was my mistake. I need to go to the wall to my house. And now we're in a lot better shape. You can see minor changes to the stairs that I expected. My roof's back in good shape. That's a relief. So now I can turn this off. And you can see that the, the wall for the fur wall is in good shape. Um, my new Dura block is located where it should be. And then I have an interior wall at a bay right at this location if that's confusing to you um, it is it's it's working very well just need to straighten out my stairs um, and the AutoCAD drawing which is this one it's drawn correctly it is the model that I need to get the footings and stuff to get corrected so the concrete and um, estimates coming through in New Dura, in case you don't know, it's an ICF, insulated concrete form. That's what you're seeing there. So, that is how you go the other direction. I uh, will replace that other video that has been so popular with this one. This is Mark Farrar with Not Square Design. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in some elevation drawings into AutoCAD and I'll just let the video run while I'm doing that in case anybody's interested in seeing that happen. So I'm going to close the section. It has been, do I want to save it? Yes, I do. Um, here's my floor plan. I'm not interested in framing right now, so let's turn it off to speed things up a little. Uh, west elevation. So this is what I want to bring into AutoCAD. <clears throat> and now that I feel confident that my stuff was lining up the way I wished, I could bring this in. Uh, this is going to be a leaded roof, so this roof actually won't have these ridge caps. Um, so, I'm very surprised that I can't. Let's see if I can open that. caps yeah I can turn them off they won't be that big um, but I need to remind myself that to be there because it is a, a leaded roof so we'll leave them for the time being now let's get this guy it's just it's pretty straightforward I've got the patterns turned off and that is under I believe it's in view I might have to look that up. Let me pause the video and look that up make sure I know where it is. 
Okay, so I found it. 3D toggle patterns. See if my siding comes back on. And roofing. Yada yada. So it's thinking. So yep, there it is. So all this is busy, 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 busy. Makes it complex. So if you want to turn that off before you bring stuff over, just turn that off. And you get rid of your patterns. And then if you want, I have to switch screens so you can see that setting. But over here on my sidebar, um, I have got the ability to turn off color. And when I do that, you'll get this look here. Now, I'm going to go back to that same sidebar location. I'm going to turn the color back on. Because, if I remember correctly, these blue lines are going to show up. But none of this fill will export. So, I'm going to export to DWG. Um, my section export to CAD all looks good. So, export pattern lines, export filled areas. I'm going to hit this because I just want you to kind of see. And I can even hit this. It doesn't really matter. So, I'm going to just hit export. And let's just see if I'm off my rocker, if I'm correct. And this will be the... This is the west... Elevation, I believe. When do I check that? How am I working? Go to the one I'm looking at, which is the front west elevation. So, got a lot of work to do here. So, when I export it from Chief, I just want to name it correctly. These are export from Chief. So, this will be a CA name. So, and it's an elev. So, I'm going to put change the sec to west. And go ahead and get rid of that and put Asian. So, this is the CA west elevation. Hit save. <clears throat> And it's done. So now, let's go back into our AutoCAD drawing. This is where I want to be. Now let's check these cool layer sets I have. So I'm going to go to my X refs. And if you look at them, I don't really have anything here for a an elevation straight up. I've got some sections. I could actually probably put it with sections just fine, but then I'd have trouble with northwest, south, east. Um, in this case, I'm going to create just one that's just this XREF C8 elevations and put them all in the same one because they don't interfere with each other as far as where they're located and I can just turn that layer off and on. If I need to separate them down the line, it's really easy to do. So the first thing I need is a new layer. It's not going to show up its filter because it's got unreconciled since it is this, but to get it to show up with the filter, its name has to include put in the caps lock x ref and then I could put dash one for now or I know what it's going to be so this is just going to be um, CA elevations and in AutoCAD I just use that now if I want it to be different so it shows up that's uh, too dark go some lighter just the outline of it, if I ever need to see where it's at, I can turn that outline on and see it. Now that that's here, I want to right click on it and tell it to reconcile. As it reconciles, it will now be available in my list here. It's currently shown as locked. I want to unlock it. And then, oh, sorry, let's stay in there because I want to just double click on it and make it current. Now that it's current, it's just Save, just common practice, save all the time. Um, now, let's do the insert of the XREF. Um, now, I exported that. And let's see this time, when we bring it in, if you remember, I went ahead and opened it, and I did all those changes in that drawing, but it didn't make any sense, or it didn't make any difference to what happened on this side of the equation. So I'm going to go ahead and just import it, and then we'll just make the layer color changes and line thickness changes right here in the working drawing. 
which is where I do sections and elevations. That's what I call the working drawing. Because it's from old school, I'm doing everything in 2D. Now, there's my CA West elevation, that's what I want to bring in. Um, I will specify where it goes on screen. Everything else, relative path and overlay are good. One to one. Hit OK. Oh, got it. So here it is. Just kind of let it fill in a little bit. See what I've got. So it looks to me like it needs to be completely, it's not coming in, so it's black. So I'll bring it over here. I'll take a look at it. And you can see, if I go here, by layer, by layer, by layer. Okay. So as an XREF, it is by layer. Now, let's see if we have to change it in the drawing itself, or, why is this still, oh, I don't know what it's doing there, but let's reconcile that. I do want everything reconciled. Now I want to come into the one that I've just imported, which is CA West Elevation. And look at that, it's only showing as one layer. And that's kind of strange. So let's see what we can figure out what's going on. Why would it do that? So I'm going to open it. The file that we created, which is ACAD Purge Chief, not that one. I'm going to back up and I'm going to go to my export from Chief. I want to go to the one I just made, West Elevation. I'm going to open that. Here's that error message saying, hey, this wasn't created in AutoCAD. Do you want to open it anyway? Yeah, I do. Zoom extends. Oops. Zoom extends. Now, um, don't like the UCS icon. It just bugs me. So let's turn it off. Every time you export from AutoCAD, it just comes in probably as a preference in my AutoCAD. So I could fix that at some point, probably. Now look at this. Now that's awful strange. That is awful strange. Now I wonder why it only brought that over. There's nothing here. It's like whatever I brought over or exported from Chief didn't work out so well. So I need to go back to Chief and let's try that again. I guess it's good to see some problems, huh? So we got the first lesson done on how to do it correctly. Now let's see what happens sometimes. So let's go File, <clears throat> Export. I'm going to export current view to DWG. That's what I'm after. Oh, now all this stuff is, there's my layer set. That is what I'm currently on. This is the way it looks. All that's good. Export the filled areas. Um, I don't know. Let's turn it off. Because I've never had this problem occur before. Now I'm in export from chief, so I'm in the right location. There's the drawing I'm looking to replace. It may not because it's open. Do I want to? Yes, I do. Now it couldn't have. I'll tell you that. So I'll come in here, and yeah, it's the same deal. So I'm going to close this. Um, I think I need to go back and do that again, because if it's open, I can't possibly overwrite it. Um, do I care to change it? I don't know. Go ahead. Save it. Um, this is my purge section. Yeah, I can let that save. Um, and this is just hanging out, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um... Let's go back here. No, I want the west elevation. So it should be sitting here. <clears throat> Export from chief. It should be sitting right here. Now I have a feeling this is not open. Are not correct. So 
It is saved at 107. It is 108 now. So it looks like it did overwrite it. But there's no way it could have viewed it. Continue. It's from Extents. So look at it. It's all kind of showing like it's there. Now, let's go to by layer. Oh, it was there the whole time. It's because I didn't do this. By layer. By layer. By layer. If I had just done that, it would have been fine. Now, when I come into here, cat default lines. See, it's all in one layer. Okay. I don't really want it in red. Could I deal with it? I could. Maybe that is a good idea for elevations. So let's just see what's going on by hitting save. And let's close it. Now, if I go to my working, it should update it. Boom, there it is. Let's move it over and see if I'd like it in red. Where can I get it? Probably the top of the door would be a great location. That guy right there. Bottom of the door. So I'll move this from the midpoint. Oh, I don't have a door drawn. I'll have to put in some reference lines. I can go right to the middle of this arch. Now I just got to get its height correct. I don't trust the roof. I trust my floors and I put in things like these. So that is a stud to give me a floor height. So this is up too high. I can't see a floor for second level on that. Drawn in. Got footings. What I do have is this line right here. So let's take a look. Making sure we've got good reference and we're getting things lined up. We're going to go to all this extent. How did that happen? Oh, it is already running. I just want to switch over to it. Okay, so I'll tab. Doesn't look like it's running. <clears throat> All right. Let's open it. Close there. Just asking about replacing texts. I don't need to replace any. So what I want to do is get that elevation open again. And this is on that super wide screen. So I will pull it over to one side once I get it open. Make it easier for you to see. Bring it in, and here it is. So, in file. That's the layer set. Oh, look at that, section view layer set. That's not what I want. See, my LAN post is there. I want the export to ACAD. Turn that lamp off. There, now I'm in good shape. So let's go to File, Export, AWG, bring it over. Everything looks good now. I'm not going to worry about any of this stuff. Export. Because I want it to do it more like I expect it to. And so I'm going to do the CA West Elevation. And I just want it to be... A different name <clears throat> so I can use see what's happening kind of get an idea and show you what's going on if I can see what's going on so now let's open that file that I just created so that's this one let's open it 
got that error message or the warning. Hey, this is not agreed about again. Now I'm here, so I'm gonna zoom extents. And again, I've got the zoom out a little bit once you do the zoom extents. Make sure you've grabbed everything because this needs to be by layer. What I'm curious about is, see, look at this. All is there. This one layer it's coming in on. Now, why is that? So, a little confused. I'm not going to save that. Do I want to save it? No. Let's see what's going on. Try some different export techniques. Let's do file, export. Now, let's try indexing. Only displayed layers. Is that why? No, there should be windows. There should be a lot of layers here. Let's try this first. Split wall assemblies and layers. I don't care about that because that's like the assembly of sheeting, uh, studs, insulation, siding. Mm, that's not what I'm after. I want to just blow that up into a whole bunch of pieces and have tons of layers deep. So that's what that means. And all used and named layers. So this would export all the layers, not the displayed layers. These are the displayed layers. So I do want the displayed layers. We're going to try with the AutoCAD indexed colors to see if it'll get me more layers. So I'm going to overwrite this one, the abbreviated version. Let's save it. I said, yes, I do. Now let's go open that and see what we got. And maybe, maybe an elevation. Oh, I'm going to get a reds. I don't know. If we do only get red again. Same thing. There, look at that. What happened? Now I've got whites. What do I have for layers? Huh. <laughs> it all came in at zero. Okay. You get red or you get white. Get blue for my arches. And I can't see much here. Look at that. Now, let's try it and see what's going on. This could be right here. Ah, uh, yeah, it was not by layer. So I change it to by layer, it goes straight to the uh, so 0.18 thickness is fine, but that's what's changing it to red. So I didn't like red, I could change it to any color, but yeah, it's all coming in on just one layer. So it doesn't matter if I use this one or the other one. So I'm not going to worry about that. <clears throat> we use the one we got. But what I do need to figure out is where am I with this portion right here. And if I click on that, let's just open this door and let's see where it's from the floor. It's at zero. So the bottom of this threshold, which is of the two lines that came through in the export here, that is my floor and that's going to be my finished floor. And so this is the basement. Uh, let's figure out where we're at. No, I can't see the basement on this drawing. Here, let's move it down some just to get it closer. It's a little confusing. Oh, there we go. Let's make sure I got that. So let's just move it down some just to get it close. I want it to stay in alignment. So now it's closer. Now I can see which of the layers are where. So here is my stud. Now I know that I've got, I'm gonna put an X line in here. Now this is what I use the junk layer for. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. So let's go to all without XREF layers. And you probably won't. All non XREF layers, there we go. I could also go to my drawing. There's much simpler. I just want this G junk layer to be active. 
And the reason why is because I'm going to do an X line. I'm going to do it horizontally. I'm going to drop it right there. Now I can take that X line and I can move it upward. And I want to move it up one inch because I've got foam pad on top of the sheeting, which is under that plate, the bottom plate that you see there. I've got quarter inch foam pad and three quarter inch of floor. So if I know where that door is, I need to go up an inch. So there is the location of the height. So now that's that line right there, that X line. And I can see the color. You probably can't in the video. There is a color difference between this red and that dark junk layer. And I've just been working with my system for so long that I know it. So that's how I can see it. Now I'm just doing a pull straight down. I could also make this accurate by typing PER to make sure it doesn't, then I get perpendicular to as my snap. And that guarantees that it's not gonna snap to the middle of some weird place. In case that's an extra long line, it's not gonna snap to some intersection anywhere strange. I want it right now just to only think about perpendicular to that line to make sure it went straight down. Now, my height should all be good. So, like I said, I've done a lot of work on this since these elevations were started. So, the difference in elevation between the XREF and the model is pretty egregious. So, here, I now want to highlight this, and it goes into your external reference because it is an external reference. So, I want to switch my tab back to home because I want to make sure that it's in the rear. It's behind my drawing that I'm doing. Now that I've got it in the rear, I'm gonna grab it one more time. That's gonna highlight the layer that it's on, and so I'm gonna lock that layer. Now, it's faded, it's sitting in the background, and I can start working my elevations so I can move these guys out to there and start fixing all this down to where it belongs and on and on. And um, if I want to verify something, what I do use consistently is checking through my elevation. So XL horizontally, I'm going to put a line on here. And that way I can come across and say, okay, I just moved that to this location. But the elevations are not always perfect because of the vent that's on top of Chief and how low, how tall I told it to draw it or model it. And I tell it to model it two inches thick, which is really thick vent. It's not that way in real life. But the reason I do that is because when I plot in black and white, which we still use because everybody still makes their replicas in black and white when they go to just a regular Reaper graphics place. Um, they're not doing color yet. It's not the big thing. And on residential stuff, I'm not seeing a lot of people using electronics. Um, not on, you know, more standard fare homes. Maybe on really expensive stuff, but not stuff this standard fare. Like all of this, since I drew this, um, that's all gone. And so now it's just a matter of changing things to where they go. And um, so I'll just take now, work my working drawing, and use the drawing that's underneath and quickly get myself an elevation. Um, if you're not okay, you, you know how fast these windows will come in. So, in fact, I think uh, if I already have even one drawn, here's one. So I can use this, stretch it, pull it, push it, and there's one. There's a complete one sitting here just for that purpose. Stretch it, pull it, push it. So if I just take this guy, copy it, copy it from his exterior, put him up here. Now it's just a stretch it, pull it, push it. So it's already the right height. Um, doesn't match what's going on behind it. I don't even care. So let's just 
get this stretched um, and I want to stretch it from there to and to go perpendicular to that. Ooh. This is a block. Oh, it is a block. I gotta explode it. So, because it's a block, it won't let me stretch it. So I just need to explode it. Now, I can stretch it. And I want to go from that intersection to, uh, see how it doesn't want to hit right here? And that's why, like, I could be up or down slightly. So I just PR to make sure that I've got a great snap. That's why I do that. And then I just got to, you know, do things like um, here. I'm going to move this guy just over a little bit for right now. I'll get it centered and all that later. But the exterior frame needs to be all the way out to here. So this is a complex window. But I'll just copy that same window over. And on the simple windows, just stretch a pole. Done. So that is how I go back and forth between these two guys little bit of my editing techniques, how I draw beams, trusses, all that stuff in AutoCAD to get very nice, clean looking structural drawings where you can see the start and stop of all members. There's no double lining like you see on Chief Architect where it just gets so full of stuff. Um, these are here right now simply for the fact that well, this layer obviously is not locked, so it's a little bright. But now that it's there, I can see where the toilet drain is, and it's pretty close. So I may have to move that because your floor trusses, but they're three and a half inches wide. So either gonna move the toilet over a little bit. So I gotta check and see if I've got my 15 inches clear and make sure it's comfortable, or um, might have to move the floor joist. And I like to work that out for my contractors. And then I dimensioned that particular floor joist. And I can tell right now, like here, here's a nice little trick. So you're, if you're working in an array, make sure to use the edit source or things like this, where I need it to be over this wall. And here's how I draw things. Now, you may not all do the same thing, so I need um, to grab that line, and I'm not grabbing it for some reason. There we go, got it. Now, it needs to be two inches past, so I'm going to just pull it to here, and then I'm going to pull it out horizontally and type two enter, or space, which is the perfect thing for enter. I don't know why. Now I'm just going to say save changes, and it will have saved that whole array of trusses all done. Now, there is a problem down here as these trusses doubled up. Now you can't change LTS in the edit truss. You actually have to redraw this truss and then just fiber A to 20 inch on center. That's a quick easy do. So all I would do is go to my correct layer, which I'm not in appropriate layer set to do such. So I just wanna to go to here now I can, I want to go to my structure layers, and I want framing, I'm looking at a floor truss, um, but I'm using the joist symbol to differentiate between these floor trusses and the roof trusses. And I probably shouldn't be, I should probably change those out. I will think that through. But basically, it's different between one dot and two dot. Um, if I come up here, you can see a truss is two dot, a joist is one dot, a rafter has three, um, my ledger disappeared. Um, if I were to take this, I'll show you how easy this is. Copy it down, take it, and 
and put it on the correct layer. So I just go to S. Oh, it's just frozen. There, it's still there. So now I come back here and delete that. It was just turned off. So there's ledger line style. Um, there's a beam. Start. Finish. One dash. And then if it has a hanger on it, it's got this symbol. Um, these headers. They could be green, they could be purple. Um, you don't see it in color. That's just by line weight. Describes how the line weight plots. Then I've got my posts all described. So if you see my posts in plan, you can see what they are. And then all the loading factors, all the stuff from doing the calculations. And then I'll just take and copy this guy over into location. And these are old style. Um, as I copy them now into new drawings, um, you can see this, and I'll just change the attribute to B. So I've gotten rid of the BM. There was no reason to have that two layer or two two letters there. So then I'll just copy these. So once I've got a beam in my framing plan. Uh, beam. Do I have one drawn yet? Doesn't appear as I do. So let's just put it in. This would be an H in this case, but like the header size would be listed in the chart. And then this would be H01 telling you what this header is, what size it is. And I think that's enough. It's a pretty long video. But we only covered what we needed early on for what was planned and just went on to do some extra. Hopefully this is helpful. If it is, please do drop a little comment. Let me know that, uh, that you liked it. What uh, you may want to see different, that kind of thing. Um, right now I'm trying to wrap some stuff up for this year, but uh, coming next year, I'll probably put out some more educational stuff. And um, not be doing as much of project stuff on on my site but more educational stuff on my site so we'll talk to you then that's it for now mark with not square design have a good day